This is the sixth and final section on the applications of forces chapter and here we look at connected particles. Now you've done connected particles in year one where you've got uh, this type of thing, uh, maybe weights passing over uh, a pulley and maybe you've got something moving up or accelerating up and something accelerating down. Um, what we do now is we're going to be looking at uh, introducing slopes. So we have something like this and maybe we've got a pulley at the end here and we'll have uh, maybe a mass here. We'll call that mass M1. We'll have a mass here. We'll call this mass M2 and there'll be a string or a rope passing over the pulley to this mass here. Now uh, before we start putting on forces and looking at angles and things like that, uh, just a couple of key fr phrases. If you see the phrase smooth pulley, so this means that there's no friction in the pulley. And if there's no friction in the pulley, that actually means that the tension that we use in any part of the string is the same. So tension constant throughout string or rope, whatever it is, or cotton. If you see um, that the string is light and inextensible, inextensible, so it doesn't stretch. What that means is that obviously we ignore that its mass. Um, but also in these questions, it means that the uh, acceleration is constant throughout the whole system. Okay, so acceleration, uh, the same or constant in both masses because they're going to be moving at the same speed because it's light and inextensible so just be aware of that smooth pulley tension is the same that's what we're assuming light and inextensible it means that the acceleration is the same so now let's put the forces on here now normally what you'll find in these questions is that mass m1 is greater than m2 meaning that this part of the system will always go down this part will always go up and that acceleration will be the same because of this light and inextensible thing. I haven't seen questions that are different to that. Right, so we have M1G down here. We'll have tension here. Um, here we'll have to put the mass of this. So that will be M or the weight of it, M2G. We'll need an angle. So that means that this angle here is theta. Uh, that means that this is m2g cos theta. This bit here is m2g sine theta. Uh, assuming, let's say that this uh, is a rough slope, then friction will be this way, which will be mu r, which means that we'll have r here, and there'll be tension going this way. So we can look at different parts of this and write equations down. So if I looked at this part here, yeah, and resolve forces going perpendicular to the slope. So let's say I was looking at forces going that way. I would get an equation which is R equals M to G cos theta. If I were to look at the forces going this way, yeah, so assuming this is accelerating up the slope, then uh, you would get different equations depending on whether it's moving up or down the slope. Um, but looking at the forces parallel to the slope, if it was accelerating up the slope and not in equilibrium, I would have T um, equals, or T minus, sorry, because it's not in equilibrium. So T minus M to G sine theta. You can see that's this one going down and then mu r is going down, so minus that as well. That will equal 
MA or M2A. And then if I look at the forces going this way, so I can write another set of equations if I resolve in that direction. And if mass M1 is moving down, uh, that will give me M1G minus T equals MA or M1A. So we've got three sets of equations here, which we can use to solve pretty much any problem. Yeah, because then you could have up to three unknowns and you can uh, solve that. Now, there's one thing we haven't looked at yet, and that is this here. Sometimes you're asked to find the uh, forces exerted on the pulley by the string. So let's look at the force exerted on the pulley by the string. So I'm going to draw like a little diagram here of my pulley. I will put on the tension forces, which are going to look like this. Now I basically want to work out what those two combined forces are on the pulley. So one way of doing it is to um, work out what um, these forces are here. Yeah, so if I worked out, for example, uh, this force here, which would be the force exerted um, or this component of the force exerted by this and then double it, I would get the same from that as well. So work out what this is using trigonometry and then double it. Or another way of doing it is to basically move the tension force that's here and just move it to here. So it looks like that. So all I've done is taken this force and just moved it to a different position and then use trigonometry, probably something like the cosine rule, to work out the size of that force there. That should really be drawn so it goes in the middle. So let's just tidy it up a bit so it's going to look something like that. Yeah. And using, I think, the cosine rule, we can work out the length of that green arrow. So there's different ways of doing it. So that will be another set of equations where basically we put the tension on here like this. And we work out, well, what force are, are those two tensions exerting on the pulley? We'll start by putting the forces on this diagram. So we have the weight of this mass 10G. We'll have tension pulling up that way. Uh, we'll have tension also pulling up that way. We'll have the weight of this mass, so that will be 5G. We'll have a normal reaction here. Now it says that the plane is rough and is a coefficient of friction of 0.2R. Now if we look at the weights of these objects, the 10 is greater than the 5. So it's going to be accelerating down this way and up the slope this way. Now we know which direction it's going in. We know which direction to put friction. Friction will oppose the motion. That's going to be mu r and mu is 0.2. So 0.2 r is my frictional force there. Let's work out what these components are of this. This is alpha. So this will be 5g cos alpha here. And this bit will be 5g sine alpha. So I think we've pretty much got everything we need on the diagram. Uh, we're told that tan alpha is 0 0.75, which is 3 quarters. So let's use that to work out the exact values of sine alpha and cos alpha. So sine alpha is going to be 3 fifths and cos alpha is 4 fifths. So we'll use that to find those exact values. They're probably going to come in handy later on. Okay, part A. 
we need to find the acceleration of the system and I notice here it says it's released from rest so if we do need to use that u is going to be zero so to find the acceleration of the system um, it looks like r and t are unknown so I'm, I'm going to need equations for those to work out what um, my acceleration is so if I start by resolving in this direction vertically then um, since it's moving down 10g is going to be the bigger force so 10g minus t equals ma now I could if I want just rearrange that to make a the subject and then it I know what I need to substitute so 10g minus t um, divided by ma now m is 10 so I don't need to put m in I can put 10 so that divided by 10 will give me the acceleration so I know that I want to eliminate that t and let's see how we go when we resolve it parallel to the slope so if I resolve parallel to the slope it's going up the slope so t is the greater force so t minus 0.2 r and minus 5g sine alpha that's going to equal ma so 5a now i haven't got quite t the subject because i need to get rid of the r don't i so i'm going to need to resolve in this direction so I can eliminate R and my equation for R would be R equals 5G cos alpha, 5G cos alpha. Now, cos alpha we've worked out is 4 fifths. So 5G times 4 fifths is just 4G. So R equals 4G that is ready to go here and that equation is ready to be rearranged to make t the subject so let's do that so i'm taking um the second equation that i've written down which is this one whoops this one here and i'm going to substitute the r in and let's see if we can tidy up a bit make t the subject and that can go into the first equation so i will have um, t in black t minus 0.2 r so four times 0.2 is going to be four fifths or 0.8 so i'll have t minus 0.8 g minus 0.8 g so there's the r gone because we substituted it in minus 5 g sine alpha now sine alpha is three fifths so three four five g times three fifths is just going to be three g so minus three g equals five a so that means that t equals 5a plus 0.8g plus 3g. Why don't we put those two together? So that would be plus 3.8g. That makes more sense. 3.8g. And that can go into our first equation now we'll have t actually or a twice so we can we can get rid of that so now we have from this 10g minus t so minus 5a plus 3.8g all over 10 this is going to give us a but we've got an a 
on the left hand side so we're going to have to um, expand the brackets and tidy that up and take it over times both sides by 10 so 10 g minus 5a minus 3.8 g equals 10 a let's add 5a to both sides so 15 a equals 10 g at minus 3.8 g so we can probably pretty much work out what a is from that so i've got 10 minus 3.8 which is like saying 6.2 g so 6.2 g divided by 15 and i will get 4.050666 recurring so we want uh, three significant figures so we'll make that 4.05 so a is 4.05 meters per second squared so there's my answer for part a now in part b i haven't got a lot of space for part b so part b down here what do we need to do in part b so part b find the tension in the string well that's easy enough now that we've got a we can substitute it into an equation and why not just substitute it into this one here yeah that's ready for us if we put it into this then we get t straight away so t oops, is going to equal 5a so i'm going to do five times answer five times answer and add 3.8 times 9.8 and i get 57.49993 recurring so three significant figure that's called at 57.5 newtons so 57.5 newtons and i'll just highlight that as the answer for part b Okay, one end of a lightning sensible string is attached to a block A, which I can see here, of a mass 2 kg. The block is held at rest on a smooth fixed plane, so this is all in equilibrium, uh, which is inclined at an angle of 30 degrees. The string lies along the line of the greatest slope of the plane, which is here, and passes over a smooth light pulley, which is fixed at the top of the plane, so there's the pulley fixed. The other end of the string is attached to the block B of mass 5 kg. The system is released from rest by modeling the blocks as particles and ignoring their resistance. There's a couple of things that we need to show. So the first thing we're going to do is to put on the forces that are on here. Right, so this is 5G. We've got our tension here going up. There's going to be tension here. There's no friction. Um, so we don't need R. We, do, we only really need R. We want mu R. So we don't need that. So that's 2G there. And we'll put on these components. So we'll have, that's 30 degrees. So we've got 2G cos 30 and here 2g sine 30 okay and what we need to do is to show the acceleration of the block is 4 over 7g now in these questions as i normally said this mass is normally bigger than that one which means that this is going to be going down that's the acceleration that way and this is going to be accelerating up so that's going to be our value of a so let's start um, by um, resolving this way so that means that 5g minus t equals ma or 5a so that's equation number one 
we need another equation so we'll, we'll resolve this way um, and that will be t minus 2g sine theta sorry sine 30 equals ma equals 2a so all we need to do now is to solve simultaneously so what I'm going to do I'm going to make t the subject of the second equation so that would be t equals 2a plus 2g sine 30 now sine 30 is a half so actually that just becomes t equals 2a plus g now that I'm going to substitute into the first equation there so that will give me 5g minus t so that's 2a plus g equals 5a so if I simplify so I've got 5g minus 2a minus g equals 5a so 5g minus g is uh, 4g equals well if I add 2a to both sides uh, 5a which then means a equals oh no it's not 5a 5 plus 2 is 7 7 a so a equals 4 over 7 G as required okay so that that's pretty straightforward um, so that's the first part of part a second part of part a find the tension in the string so all we need to do is to substitute 4 over 7 G into the equation I'm going to substitute it into um, where did I make t the subject? Ah, oh, let's substitute it into this. So I'll just write that down again, that t equals 2a plus g. So that means that t equals 2 times 4 over 7g plus g. So that would be t equals 15 over 7 G or um, I would need to give that to three significant figures so if I do 15 over 7 times by G 9.8 and uh, yeah that gives exactly 21 newtons or 21 newtons so either one of those is fine so it's nice and straightforward part B state how you've used the fact that the string is inextensible in your calculations right in inextensible is to do with the acceleration so I can put that the acceleration uh, is the same I could put either side of the pulley or on both sides of the pulley both sides of the pulley or you could put that it's constant it's the same throughout something that mentions the acceleration and then part C the force exerted on the pulley by the string right so let's draw a little door diagram here's my pulley these are the two tensions which are both 21 newtons okay what we want to do is to find out what what is that combined okay so that's going to be something like this so it's the green arrow let's change that color then it's the green one i'm looking at and i'm going to work that out from one of the tensions and then double it so if i take that triangle and draw it over here a little bit clearer okay so this bit is like where the green arrow is that's the 21 Newtons there and the angle here it's basically half of this angle so if we take this angle down at the bottom it means that the angle at the top here this is 60 degrees so between there and there 60 degrees since it's only half of it that there is 30 degrees 
So this side here, the side that we're interested in, is uh, 21 cos 30, just simple trigonometry. So if we work that out, 21 times by cos 30, that's 21 root 3 over 2. Then we need to times that by 2. So that'll just be because we've got this amount from here and we're going to have the same amount from the other tension over there. So that's just 21 root 3, but um, we can't leave our answer like that because g is given to three significant figures and this isn't a number that's three significant figures, it's exact. So what I need to do, convert it to a decimal and round it so I will get that tension, uh, the force, sorry not the tension, the force exerted on the pulley by the string would be 36.4 newtons when it's rounded to a free significant figure so we can't give an exact answer. There is another way of working out the force exerted um, but it's a, maybe a, a little bit more work so there's an alternative way would be to, there's the tension going down, is to move the tension going down the slope here, just move it to here, like this. So you've got two tensions there but above 21 and we want to find this. Now we can use the cosine rule because um, we know this angle here is going to be the same as the one we had before 30 so this is isosceles so that's 30 so that means that this angle here is going to be 120 so we could use the cosine rule because we've got two sides and the angle between um, so you'd say that a squared this length squared is 21 squared plus 21 squared plus 2bc cos 120 and you'd still get the same answer so this is a different way of doing it and all we're doing is getting that tension here and moving it down here and working out the length of this um, but yeah you'd still get the same answer if you did it that way okay you should now do exercise 7f on pages 152 to 154 of the textbook and then you can go on and do the mixed exercise.